Hi everyone, it's meteorologist Joe Chaffee. We've been doing these uh, series of uh, posts previewing what will ultimately be my wintertime forecast, such as it is, uh, which I will come out with probably at 8 p.m. Eastern Time on Sunday, November 6th. So if you're not paying attention to the election at that point, um, you can kind of break away for a little while and focus on my forecast for the winter of 2016, 2017. And this week, just looking, first we're going to look back at stats for New York City, just to familiarize everybody. New York City, on average, uh, it's kind of an odd place where New York City is geographically because it's too far west sometimes to pick up some of the storms that hit Long Island and eastern Connecticut with heavy snows, and New York City's kind of on the edge of that. And oftentimes it's too far south for storms that go just to our west, so it winds up changing to rain after a few inches, and areas north and west, uh, up in northwest New Jersey, and then up in the Hudson Valley and further north, wind up with a significant snowfall. And sometimes, but not often, it could actually be too far north, as you get these weather systems that go by to our south that bring snows to parts of central and south Jersey, but the snows never make it up this far. So given all that, the range actually across uh, the city goes from 20 inches right along the south coast that's along the ocean to uh, up to 25 to 30 inches as you go up into northern areas of Manhattan where there is actually a little bit of elevation. Uh, it, it's not a whole lot of elevation, but sometimes it's enough to prolong snow for an extra hour or so. And the same goes for the uh, northern areas of the Bronx as you go up uh, into southern Westchester County. I would kind of favor the amounts. The blue area is 20 to 25. I would probably favor the closer to 25, except right along the immediate coast. And in the 25 to 30, I would favor probably closer to 30 because um, the uh, stats sometimes can be misleading. There are a lot of microclimates that occur uh, that we've discovered as we get more and more data, uh, area, data sets coming in from new reporting stations that just didn't exist 20, 30, 40, or 50 years ago. Now, we're going to move to uh, what I'm looking at going forward and just the status of some of these uh, uh, indicators that we look, like, look at. The first is uh, the North Atlantic Oscillation or what we refer to as the Greenland Block. Now, um, what basically the North Atlantic Oscillation and the Arctic Oscillation uh, are measuring is uh, the relative displacements of cold air um, and also uh, the fact that uh, pressures, when they are rising in Arctic regions, um, they uh, tend to uh, produce blocking. Uh, and this is uh, what uh, we're looking at with the North Atlantic Oscillation, what we call the Greenland block. So when the index is negative, it's telling us that there is uh, a greater chance for blocking developing or conditions would be more favorable for blocking. And in this instance, in the short range, it's actually forecast to go negative for much of the end of October into the very beginning of November. So that, but then this is just one indicator. The PNA is the Pacific North America Index. When this is positive, uh, there is strong high pressure in the western part of the United States. And that uh, is usually what we would call a big ridge in the west. And that's usually a, a, a sign, a, a way of opening an alleyway of delivering cold air from northern Canada down into the Midwest and into the eastern part of the United States. Uh, the East Pacific Oscillation is the opposite of the North Atlantic Oscillation. This is on the Pacific side. And uh, when this index goes positive, it tends to say that we don't have, um, that it's not a cold look. Okay, so you kind of have to blend all these things when you're looking at them. And then you take these indexes and you look at the overall pattern. So at least from the standpoint now in the short to what I would regard to as the medium range going into the first week in November. It's kind of mixed. Um, there's probably going to be a warm spell. Uh, we're having a shot of cool air now. Um, you know, I'm tending to think that temperatures over the next couple of weeks, when you average it all out from beginning to end, will probably be close to normal, but there are going to be some swings in there to some degree. Now, uh, the uh, next thing we want to look at is one thing that I'm looking at in terms of the longer term, and there's been evidence of significant warming going on across the Arctic regions from Greenland all the way to the North Pole and westward. And why is that important is that if you have 
warm air building across the Arctic regions, it displaces cold air further south. Now, this is an example of what the upper air is supposed to look like uh, at the, on, on Halloween with the vortex sitting up in Hudson's Bay and kind of a gentle west-northwest flow. This is a colder flow, but it's nothing exceptional. But uh, this is what we've been seeing uh, lately, not just at this level of the atmosphere, but all the way up. And that's important because uh, if the vortex in the stratosphere is weak, um, it's going to favor a colder than normal winter uh, in the eastern part of the United States. Okay, so let's review also Siberian snow cover, which we did touch on a couple of days ago, but in case you missed it, uh, this is the in index that the indicator that follows the theory that says we, we watch snow cover, snow cover growth in Siberia south of 60 degrees north for the month of October. And the rate of growth, the faster the rate of growth of that snow cover, the higher the probability is of a colder than normal winter in the eastern U.S. I've been saying this over and over again, that no index is 100%. This one did not work last year, and you can see it here. That index last year finished uh, very close to the high, the highest level, the highest reading that was uh, shown uh, over the last 16 winters. It worked the prior two winters. It didn't work last winter because last winter, I think the El Nino was so strong, it just trumped everything. So if we're going back to a more normalized atmosphere from that respect, we have uh, our index growth rate here, even with the winter of 2014, 2015, which if you remember, the second half of that winter was particularly severe um, from uh, the moment of the half blizzard on Janu just, uh, around January 24th, 25th, and then um, going uh, on right through the end of March. I remember that, that particular winter, we still had ice-covered lakes here at the end of March, which in the 30 years I've lived on Long Island, I've never seen anything frozen much beyond the first or second week of March, but to carry it through the end of the month was exceptional. So we're going to watch that indicator. And just to show you that since we only have uh, about eight days left in the month of October, uh, the GFS and the two lines, this is 40 degrees north, this is 60 degrees north. So we're watching the snow cover growth in between these two areas. And the GFS is forecasting uh, rather robust additional snows for the next um, 10 days or so. So this is kind of a preview. You can read more on the piece. There's going to be a, a link at the end of this video that you can go to to read on it a little bit more extensively at uh, the website meteorologistjochaffee.com and uh, to you know just go ahead and check it out and in the meantime as far as the local weather is concerned right now we're just kind of settling back after yesterday's rain and wind um, looks the weather looks rather benign but cold through at least the middle part of this week with just a chance for showers on Monday and then we could have uh, some of our first freezes of the season here in the New York New Jersey Connecticut uh, Northeast Pennsylvania Hudson Valley area uh, so mon not so much Monday night, but probably Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. So have a great west of rest of your Sunday, which I am because the Giants won this morning against the Rams. And we'll see what the Jets do uh, by the time that game is over with. Uh, I think they're still winning by one last I checked.